inshallah, we'll begin our program. I want to first, on behalf of the executive board and everyone at Masjid al Sadiq, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be gathered here in this blessed place, his house, for first and foremost, us to gain some knowledge and allowing us to be gathered here as brothers and sisters to share a bond and an experience together. We're indeed honored and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing our beloved guests to us here safely and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns him to his home safely. I mean, inshallah, I won't take much more of your time T tonight. On Tuesday nights, we normally have a class here at the masjid. Uh, our Ustad Ibrahim Al-Huri uh, teaches. Many of his students are here tonight as well. And we, I, I would ask Ustad Ibrahim to maybe address you for two minutes. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First off, we want to start with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah azza wa jal for making this gathering possible. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Abi Taymiyyah very recently reached out to me and told me he's coming to the States. He has a relationship with my brother. They went to the same school in Medina. And we've met and also through online, you know, giving da'wah, so on and so forth. We've seen, he's seen things of me and so on and so forth. And alhamdulillah, the da'wah circle is small. And alhamdulillah, of the first place that I called was here, the management of this masjid. And without taraddud, without any, I don't know, maybe, they said, alhamdulillah, we can have this program. And I thank them for that. And as we see the result of all of you coming out here, from far and wide, I know people from different states who are here, definitely different boroughs, Long Island, so on and so forth. May Allah bless all of you. I mean, and I just want to say about the Sheikh, many of you already know his accolades, but many of you don't know him personally. Allah has blessed me to be able to house the Sheikh and take him around for the past couple of days, and it was an honor, Wallahi. I've seen from the brother's character something that really warms my heart. Brother is very polite. Following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in akhlaq. Something that is very nadir, very rare that you find. And I saw this with the brother, mashallah. Dealing with the elderly, dealing with the young brothers who come to him, all the people giving them time, hugging and so on and so forth. To the point we have to rip him away because he never leaves the people coming to him. May Allah bless him. Allahumma ameen. For inshallah, I don't want to take too long. We just ask our brothers and sisters, please give him husn istima. Listen very well. The sisters downstairs, please, no one talking, right? Everyone listen very well. Be respectful. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in the speech of the Shaykh, Allahumma ameen, and open our ears and our hearts to benefit. Fadl, inshallah. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا لله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا First and foremost I just want to clarify Sheikh Ibrahim was speaking about someone else right I don't know who he was speaking about may Allah Azza wa Jal allow us to benefit from that person he was speaking about because I don't know who he is secondly I really just want to take a moment now to thank the administration of the masjid who were kind enough to facilitate this program. And thirdly, our Sheikh Ibrahim, who was more than kind enough to let go of his class. He had a class at this time. And inshallah ta'ala, all of you guys are going to come to the class next week. <laughs> right? Sheikh Ibrahim, he teaches every week here. Right? Some of the students are here today as well. These lectures that we deliver, my brothers and my sisters, are like paracetamol. Do you guys know what paracetamol is? 
I think that's a UK term. Well, how did he say in American? Talanoid? Whatever it's called, I think you guys get a gist. Right? Lectures. Lectures are like paracetamol on this painkiller. Right? A more broader term. These lectures, my brothers and my sisters, what it does, it may well increase your iman. It may well increase your iman. Is it better now? These lectures. Okay. Bismillah. Mic check one, two, three. These lectures, brothers and sisters, are nothing more than a painkiller, which doesn't deal with the underlying problems that a person may be suffering from. A lot of us, we are in need of an operation. When you have an operation, it deals with the issues that are underlining, right? And this is, my brothers and my sisters, the knowledge that we seek on a regular basis. And that's the reality, brothers and sisters. As we mentioned yesterday, and in some of the other lectures as well, it is almost impossible to function as a human being in this universe without having knowledge and i would normally give examples of all of these youtubers that we have did i mention that yesterday yes. i did right put your hand up if you came to the lecture yesterday it's a few type i gave an example of of all these different youtubers that we are all very familiar with even though they have money even though they have fame they have all of the materialistic things that you can think of. They have the women, they have the cars. However, they are still spiritually dead and empty. They, my brothers and my sisters, are depressed. Who am I referring to? And nobody laugh, please, guys, when I say this. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has protected us from, right, such experiences and difficulties that these YouTubers are going through. The likes of Logan Paul, KSI, Justin Bieber, Fusi Tube, that guy called Mr. Beast. Huh? What they all have in common is what? Being celebrities, fame, money, cars, women, you name it. Also what they have in common is that they are depressed. I'm not bringing this out of my own back pocket, guys. I am not bringing it out of my own back pocket. They themselves have come out openly and made this claim. I sent these clips to my little brother, Ibrahim, and I said to him, what do you think? He says, SubhanAllah, wow man, looks like they're living double lives. If only these people knew how to deal with the spiritual emptiness that they have, they would be ready to give up everything. But the reality of the matter is, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارْ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Allah tells us, it's not the eyes that are blind. However, it's the heart that has become empty and is not able to see that which is good for it. Right? May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from this spiritual emptiness. Right? And this is something, my brothers and my sisters, that cannot be filled with these materialistic things that we have. The way Allah Azza wa Jal has created your heart, it craves for its creator. It craves for its creator. No matter what you are giving in this world. We are told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you acquire a mountain of gold. Is that enough for him? No, who can tell me the hadith? You've acquired a mountain of gold. What does he want next? He wants another one. The way this dunya has been created, it entices you, it beautifies itself to you, making you think that the moment you acquire, for example, this house, it's an objective that many of us might have, right? Once you have that dream house, 
you're going to be happy and satisfied. And the moment you acquire it, you're back to square one. What's next? You are not satisfied. That dream car that you really, really badly want, the moment you acquire it, thinking, khalas, I'm going to be happy, you're back to square one. And I gave you yesterday the example of all of these rappers that messaged me on Instagram with blue ticks, uh, verified accounts. You click on their profile and you think, subhanAllah, what's going on? Right? They've got all the money, they've got all the fame, they have everything that a lot of the shabab today would really, really want. Sahih. However, the moment I start speaking to them, he's sending me these yellow emojis with the tears. The man's empty. He's depressed. His heart is in a state. Right? And like I said, the only way that this individual is going to be able to overcome the spiritual emptiness is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence why today, my brothers and my sisters, I have decided to go through, if we can get through the 15, right, then that would be great, but at least 10 points that will really, really soften up our hearts. Yesterday, we stressed the importance of knowledge. All of these different fitan, these isms that we have, whether it may be secularism, feminism, liberalism, all of these doubts that come from the rainbow team, right? That we may struggle to answer. The way that we can maneuver and navigate around all of these different doubts that are being spread left, right and center, especially in the universities, which I call a breeding ground for kufr, shirk, fahisha. All of these different isms, and of course, the colorful things, right? Today we had a great time at Queen's College. A wonderful time. Speaking about feminism and engaging with our sisters. May Allah Azza wa bless them. Right? We had a wonderful time. And likewise, I have a great time with the feminists on Twitter. We're having a great time, guys. Intellectually challenging them. But the point of the matter that I'm really trying to emphasize here, guys, you have all of these different daws that are being spread around that is hijacking the minds of our youth. Not knowing how to respond. And because they don't know how to respond, they fall flat on their faces. And as I've been mentioning, guys, time and time again, and I said it today in the university as well, just because we don't have the answers, that doesn't mean there aren't any answers. Does that make sense? I'll say that again. Just because we don't have any answers to the doubts that are being posed, that doesn't mean there aren't any answers. And I gave the example of a second year med student, right? He goes back home to maybe Pakistan, right? Or he might go back to Guyana, I know there's mashallah, right? Or maybe back to Somalia, do you have any Somalis here? Other than our one brother who came from Ohio, huh? Or anywhere else, right? Second year med student. Sometimes what happens is when you go back home and they find out this guy is maybe studying a certain field, they start throwing questions at him. He's going to turn around, I don't have the answers for it. I'll go and find out the research for you. And that's, you know, common sense that you don't speak without knowledge, right? But why is it when it comes to our religion, my brothers and my sisters, we're not fully equipped to repel the doubts that are coming our way the moment we hear a doubt or two, right, which is not in line with our Islamic values and morals, we tend to fall flat on our faces. We're completely overwhelmed by these doubts. It destroys our hearts. Hmm. So al-ilm, my brothers and my sisters, is needed to overcome a lot of the problems that we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why I'm inviting every single one of you guys to come every week here. Don't just come when there's a speaker on YouTube huh? that you've been watching his reels all of these years or all of these months. We need beneficial knowledge, my brothers and my sisters, that's going to help us maintain ourselves throughout. Right? Why did I mention all of this knowledge and knowledge and knowledge? 
This knowledge will not enter in our hearts, my brothers and my sisters, unless, unless our hearts become soft and tender. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi mentions that this is one of my favorite quotes. He says, فَإِنَّ الْقَلْبَ إِذَا كَانَ رَقِيقًا لَيِّنَا كَانَ قَبُولُهُ لِلْعِلْمِ سَهْلًا يَسِيرًا He says, when your heart becomes soft and tender, the ilm entering into it will become a lot more easier. Sometimes we feel as if there is a seal on our hearts. No matter how much time we put into, right, learning the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it just doesn't seem to be happening. It just does not seem to be happening. And that is maybe because our hearts are not soft and tender, brothers and sisters. Right? He then goes on to say, وَرَسَخَ الْعِلْمُ فِيهِ وَثَبَتْ You will see that the ilm will really take hold of this heart. It will solidify inside of this heart. And that is because his heart has become what? Soft and tender. He also then goes on to say, وَإِذَا كَانَ قَاسِيًا غَلِيظًا كَانَ قَبُولُهُ لِلْعِلْمِ صَعْبًا عَسِيرًا However, if the heart is hard and rigid, the ilm will find it extremely difficult entering into that heart. And that is due to it becoming disease. Right? It has become sick. The ailment has taken over it. So how is it, my brothers and my sisters, right, that we can soften up this heart? We're going to go through all of these points. I want you guys also to Pay attention to this very powerful statement of Ibn Uthaymi, rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, مَنْ طَهَّرَ قَلْبَهُ مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي كَانَ أَفْهَمَ لِلْقُرْآنِ وَمَنْ تَنَجَّزَ قَلْبُهُ مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي كَانَ أَبْعَدَ فَهْمًا عَنِ الْقُرْآنِ Whoever's heart now, my brothers and my sisters, becomes cleaned from sins, right? The filth of sins, this person will be able to understand the Qur'an better. You know, my brothers and my sisters, especially with Ramadan around the corner, and I think it's imperative that I mention this, right? A lot of us are going to want to have a relationship with the Quran. We're going to try and open it, right? But maybe a couple of moments will go by and we'll close it again. And then we'll try again, and then we're back to square one. We'll try, we're back to square one. Many, many years ago, when I was in Al Yemen, I seen this brother. I seen his brother who wanted to memorize the Quran, but everybody wants to do something. Sah. He would walk into the masjid. He would sit down, open the Quran. Wallahi al-Azim, brother and sister, he would sit there for a couple of moments and then close the Quran, leave the masjid. And then he comes back. Ten minutes later, exact same process. Opens up the Quran, tries to read, tries to memorize. Doesn't seem to be happening for him. Closes it, leaves, and then comes back again. It became very, very clear that this person had a problem. You know what his problem was? Constantly ripping into others. Tearing the honor of others to shreds. He is this, or that sheikh is this, and that sheikh is this, and whatever have you, that, and then that. Sometimes when we think about, or when the discussion of sins is opened up, the first thing that comes to mind is what? Watching adult content, right? Watching haram, looking at the opposite gender. Huh? You know how people go window shopping, right? This guy's going Instagram shopping. Huh? He's looking around, he's on the sister, and then he's, you know, and he's telling himself, Wallahi, you know, marriage, marriage, yeah, marriage. No, Wallahi. Huh? This guy's go, he's, he's, uh, he's marriage shopping. Huh? And he knows, he knows well enough that he is not in a position, right? Or he is not taking the right method in pursuing marriage. And he's just diseasing his heart. Does that make sense? That's what comes to mind when we talk about sins. However, that which may, uh, that we may tend to overlook is some of the other things such as speaking about others. And sometimes it is done under the guard of religion. Huh? Under the guard of religion. I'm doing this now in order to save the Islam and the Right? I need to save the religion. 
So he looks for every way now to speak about the other individual. And this is a brother who was tested by that. He just came, started seeking knowledge. He was there for two years, didn't have the Arabic language. He's too busy. Huh? If you ask him about politics, he knows everything. Huh? He knows everything that's happening between this sheikh and then what's happening in the UK, what's happening in the US. And I'm like, whoa, man. Huh? This guy's got the whole map under his belt. Right? But he was tested with that. Right? The sins that we fall into, my brothers and my sisters, it really, really ties us down. It really, really ties us down. No matter how much we try to convince ourselves that what we are doing is actually correct. Also, another very profound statement I think is worth mentioning. Ibn Taymiyyah says, القلب لا يدخله حقائق الإيمان إذا كان فيه ما ينجسه من الكبر والحسد he says the realities of faith will not enter into one's heart. If in his heart is that which is impurifying it. And then he gives examples such as arrogance and also envy. Arrogance. We all know arrogance is right, brothers and sisters. Batarul haqi wa nas. To belittle the people and to also what? Reject the truth when it's brought to you. This is very, very important, guys. A lot of us are tested by it. And may Allah as well protect us from it. Especially the moment you start seeking knowledge and you end up maybe acquiring a position within your community. Ooh. Shaitan goes to people from different avenues from different doors. But a person who's now started seeking knowledge or he's learned a little bit here and there, look what Ibn Taymiyyah says. He says, رَأَيْتُ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْمُنْتَسِبِينِ لِلْعِلْمِ يُبْتَلَوْنَ بِالْكِبِرِ كَمَا يُبْتَلَ أَهْلُ الْعِبَادِ بِالْشِرْكِ I saw many, many, not just one or two. And that scares the living daylight out of me, brothers and sisters. Wallahi al-Azim. He says, many of those who ascribe themselves to knowledge they become tested with what? They become tested with arrogance. The same way a person of ibadah, you know when you are a devout worshipper, you're worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal constantly, right? Shaitan comes and he says, Akhi, go and tell people that you're doing worship. Just so, you know, they can kind of like give you your due right. They can give you your haqq. Are you brothers and sisters with me? And then he says, And then they are deprived of the reality or the essence of knowledge. Can we have the brothers moving up as much as you guys can, inshallah ta'ala? So you guys can see the message getting packed. Sakum Allah khair. Yeah. There's some space on that side as well. If you guys can, yeah. So I'll keep it, brothers and sisters, right? Belittling people, rejecting the truth when it comes to you. Huh? Someone comes and tells you, Akhi, what you're doing is not right. Instead of taking on the chin, brother, right? Giving all sorts of excuses, rejecting it just for the sake of rejecting it, guys. Hmm? All of this, my brothers and my sisters, will destroy and taint our hearts. Right? To conclude this introduction, my brothers and my sisters, before I go into the 10 points or maybe the 15 points, this is very, very touching. Ibn Rajab rahmatullahi says, الاشتغال بتطهير القلوب أفضل من الاستكثار من الصوم والصلاة. Right. Being occupied in cleaning your heart is more better than having a lot of fasts and a lot of prayers. Meaning, obligatory or voluntary? We're talking about the voluntary acts. Right. Occupying yourself in cleaning your heart, my brothers and my sisters is more virtuous than 
having a lot of voluntary fasts and prayers while at the same time your heart is tainted and look what he says لم يكن أكثر تطوع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه بكثرة الصوم والصلاة right he says the majority of voluntary acts that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions used to engage in wasn't a lot of fasting and a lot of praying but rather it was بل ببر القلوب وطهارتها وسلامتها but rather it was them working hard on purifying their hearts them working towards making sure that their hearts were conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they had that piety in their hearts because they know when you rectify your heart it is going to start projecting on your limbs Sahih. sometimes you see an individual saying Akhi, right you advise him in the wrong that he's doing Akhi, my heart you know my heart is great you know as long as the heart is good no matter what you do with your limbs no my brothers and my sisters it doesn't work like that it's in fact the opposite when your heart now becomes pure right and it becomes tahir it becomes cleansed you will see it now projecting on one's limbs right that light cannot just remain inside of your heart guys it starts what coming out it can't hold itself inside of the heart it starts coming out guys onto your limbs that's why the Prophet said Indeed inside of your body is what? A piece of flesh If that becomes rectified everything else becomes rectified If that becomes corrupt everything else becomes corrupt So don't tell me my brother right, or my sister that your heart is great while you've lost control over your limbs This is a sign for you that you really, really need to do something about yourself. Right. As much you may have wonderful intentions, that you want to do good, and no one will take that intention away from you, that you have good intentions moving forward. But remember, my brothers and my sisters, right? the fact that this is now professing on your limbs is a problem. Put your hand up if you want to have a relationship with the Qur'an. That you want to be able to taste the sweetness of the Qur'an. Right? We all do. Every single one of us does. I know a lot of us are sitting here, right? That just, you know, don't have that relationship. And they're looking for something to really kickstart that journey with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see people, my brothers and my sisters, Right? Who don't have much. Right? And you can maybe put students of knowledge in that bracket. They don't have much. They barely have anything. Right? But they have the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they carry in their hearts, which they read every single day. They pursue sacred knowledge. And they are the happiest people in the world. They are the happiest people in the world. And that is because they have the ability, and I say this, right? And I mean every letter. They have the ability to open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, my beloved brothers and sisters, number one. If you are feeling depressed, miserable and sad, you are experiencing some sort of agony, you feel that hardness in your heart, my brothers and my sisters. You feel down. And listen up to this first point, my brothers and my sisters. The first point is, تَأْثِيرُ اللَّهِ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ بِفِعْلِ الْأَعْمَالِ الصَّالِحَةِ أو إِثَارُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ بِفِعْلِ الْأَعْمَالِ الصَّالِحَةِ to give precedence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him priority in your life right by doing that which is pleasing to him 
Listen up to what Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi had to say. He says, وَلَيْسَ لِلْقُلُوبِ سُرُورٌ وَلَا لَذَّةٌ تَامَ إِلَّا فِي مَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ وَالتَّقَرُّبِ إِلَيْهِ بِمَا يُحِبُّهُ وَلَا تُمْكِنُ مَحَبَّةُ إِلَّا بِالْعِرَاضِ عَنْ كُلِّ مَحْبُوبٍ سِوَاهِ He says, the heart will not experience happiness. And it will also not enjoy its ultimate sweetness except by doing that which will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you love anything else in this world. Right? And this cannot be possible. You cannot love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accordingly, my brothers and my sisters, illa bil-i'radi an kulli mahbubin siwah. Except that you turn away from everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean, my brothers and my sisters? Does that mean you can't love your wife? You can't love your parents? Right? You can't take from the dunya. Is that what it means? No, it doesn't. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes before everything that might well be important to you. He is number one priority and no one is going to get in between him and myself. Right? At times, my brothers and my sisters, you find yourself in a predicament. You have your friends who are calling you to haram. It's very, very tempting. Right? You know Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, Man arada safa'a qalbihi falyu'thiri Allah ala shahwati. Whoever wants a pure, clean heart, then let him always put Allah azza wa jal before his desires, before his shahwa. You know my brothers and my sisters, especially on my Instagram, I always receive messages from brothers and sisters. A lot of times sisters who message him saying that they're heartbroken, right? The guy made her all of these promises and he eventually dumped her. He left her disappointed. Is it really, really surprising, my brothers and my sisters, that she is now in the state of misery, of sadness? It's really not surprising to me, right? And that is because we have chosen other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over who? Over Allah jalla fi ula. Ibn Taymiyyah says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ كُلَّ مَنْ أَحَبَّ شَيْئًا لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَضُرُّهُ مَحْبُوبُ He says, no, anyone who loves other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning he prioritizes other than Allah azza wa jal over him, it's only a matter of time, it's only a matter of time, that you are left hurt by that person that you prioritize. Now she's hurt. She's broken. She is what? Suffering from all types of miseries and sadness. Right? And that is because she preferred other than Allah Azza wa Jalla. And sometimes you find that in a work setting. Right? We're more concerned about pleasing that boss. At the expense of our religion, you know you have to get up and start praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you don't want to rock the boat, right? You don't want him to think that you are Muslimic. Sahih? You don't want him to think like that, right? You just want to blend in. Huh? So that you get maybe a pay rise later on down the line. Sahih? You don't even inquire about whether I can maybe be let into a room where I can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guess what happens, my brothers and my sisters? It's only a matter of time before they bash heads with one another. And we've seen it happen across the board. I don't want to rock the boat with the guy who Allah is providing for. With the guy who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing for. You look at him as the provider. Allah is providing for you and him as well. And this is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said, whoever tries to seek the pleasure of the creation and on the way of doing so he displeases Allah Azza wa Jal. what happens Allah becomes angry with him and the creation become angry with him as well you're left disappointed and you're left hurt and that is simply because that is simply because you prioritized other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over him right you're left disappointed and you're left hurt so if you want that ultimate happiness my brothers and my sisters 
do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do. It's hard. It's a predicament that you find yourself in. Your friends are all going to haram. Right? And you will Shall I? Shall I not? Right? You turn away my brothers and my sisters. Right? You leave that behind for the sake of Allah. See how you feel almost instantly upon turning away from that haram. Take this from me guys. Almost instantly. The moment, the moment you hold back from that haram which is so tempting. Right? The bigger the struggle, the bigger the reward. See how you will feel almost immediately, brothers and sisters. Right. You know what my favorite hadith is? Who can tell me? It's my favorite hadith. Tfadl. Allahu Akbar. You got that from the video, right? Zakhallah <laughs> khair. No, that's why I asked. Inna kalan tada'a shayin ittiqaan lillahi la ataka Allahu khairan minhu. What's your name? Sayyid Ali. In the Yemeni? Huh? Oh, mashallah. I can like Sayyid. Huh? You don't leave something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you that which is better. And you will see that my brothers and sisters almost in instantly. Right? So putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Right? Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi he also says فَلَا تَزُولُ الْفِتْنَةُ عَنِ الْقَلْبِ إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَ دِينُ الْعَبْدِ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ The fitna, you know the fitna that strikes the heart, my brothers and my sisters, that pierces through it, huh? will not go away unless it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is most important inside of your heart. And then you have the opposite. Look what Ibn Al-Qaim Al-Qaim mentions. Al-Ma'asi wal-Fasadu tujibu al-Hamma wal-Ghamma wal-Khawfa wal-Huzna wa Dhiqa Sadr. Sinning and corruption. You know what it causes your heart? Distress, agony, fear, sadness, tightness of the chest, وَأَمْرَاضَ الْقَلْبِ And also different ailments and sicknesses of the heart. And there is no cure for it except by returning back to Allah Azza wa repenting. Are we beginning to see why we may feel a certain way, my brothers and my sisters? Yeah. You must be wondering, my brothers and my sisters, where did all of these different statements come from? Right? You know, one time, my brothers and my sisters, a brother in a WhatsApp group, he asked a sheikh, it's a WhatsApp group that I was inside. Ya Sheikh, and he's a student of knowledge. Right? Ya Sheikh, how can I soften up my heart? How can I soften up my heart? The response of the Shaykh was, I don't know what to tell you because my heart is not soft. Right? And I'll put this to the Shaykh being humble, right? Showing a sense of humility when answering this question or this question I was posed to him, right? So that night, I went through maybe five years of notes on my iPhone. You know, on Apple, you have these notes, right? And you guys might want to utilize it by taking the benefits that you come across and then saving on there. So I would do every year. Whenever I came across the benefit, I would just save it on there. Whenever a sheikh talked about softening the heart, I just took that and put it somewhere. All right. I'm honestly thinking of turning this into a book, guys. All of these different statements of the great scholars, the classical scholars of the past. It is as if they are living amongst us, brothers and sisters. They really, really did have the answers to what we are going through today, brothers and sisters. Our hearts are being tainted. And it's not easy living in this kind of environment, especially if you live here in New York. Right? How the women are objectified. They used as marketing tools 
to grab the attention of the consumer. You see a toothbrush being sold, right? A toothbrush or a toothpaste being advertised on the billboard and then you have a half-naked woman right next to it. What on earth does the half-naked woman got to do with the toothbrush, girls? Tell me. Because they know that's what's going to grab your attention. Right? It's our biggest fitna. A sister said that when I called the women yesterday fitna, I'm going to answer this on camera. She goes, I don't like how you're speaking about the women. Huh? I was just quoting the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu right? <laughs> and I think she misunderstood what I was saying. So I'm going to explain it now. The Messenger Sallallahu said, مَا تَرَكْتُ فِتْنَةً أَضَرْ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي مِنَ النِّسَاءِ I haven't left a fitna that is greater upon women. Uh, uh, on men. <laughs> I haven't left a fitna that is more greater upon men than women. That doesn't mean that the woman's bad. Right? Or that her existence is a problem. No, I never said that. And I think that's how it's maybe been understood. Right? The point that I was trying to make is that the men are weak. They need help. Right? Let's be honest here. That's our biggest fitna. Men struggle with that, right? Anyone disagree? Huh? This is a problem. Wallahi al-Azim. If a man thinks that he has, right, the toughness and the capability, right, to hold himself together when he's alone with a woman, I don't know what planet you're from. <laughs> right? Allah Azza wa Jalla told us this. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Man has been created weak. Sufyan al-Thawri rahmatullahi alayhi He says what this weakness here means is man's lowering his gaze. Right? Man's lowering his gaze. A lady walks past he just can't hold himself together except by looking at her. It's a weakness that we have. It's our biggest fitna. Right? So my sisters don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying your existence is a problem. No, not at all. That's just how Allah Azza wa Jal made things happen. Does that make sense? Right? So it's hitting our heart. The fitness there. Summertime. Right? They're barely wearing anything. And we're seeing this. It is destroying our hearts, brothers and sisters. Right? It's really destroying our hearts. And every time there is what? A black dot on the heart. What does he do? He affects it. More black dots and more and more up until the whole heart now becomes black. Second one, my brothers and my sisters, second point. How long do I have shake? 34 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. What time do we start? We started at like 6.40. Alright, type. We've got difference of opinion. <laughs> Amin, mashallah, our brother Amin drove down from Philly with his Tesla. Huh? May Allah Azza wa bless him. Second one, brother and sister, that's really, really going to soften up your heart. Mu'amalatu nasi bil lutf. Dealing with the people in a kind manner. Being nice to them, right? Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, فَلَيْسَ لِلْقَلْبِ أَنْفَعُ مِنْ مُعَامَلَةِ النَّاسِ بِالْلُطْفِ وَحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَهُمْ Right? There's nothing more beneficial to the heart than treating the people kindly. Right? Treating them nicely, guys. وَحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَهُمْ And loving good for them. Let me give an example. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed you in your venture. You know, Shaykh here sells these lovely hats. Huh? We call him the Halal Huris. You know? <laughs> Allah Mubarak is doing amazing. Somebody comes up to him and he wants to try, he wants to try that same trait. And he asks him, how do you get these hats done? I want to put my own brand on it. <sighs> Shaytan might whisper and say, competitor. Huh? This guy be trying to take over, right? What was the hadith of the Prophet? لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحبه 
One is not a true believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. The way we should or we could really apply this hadith is in situations like this. Loving khair and good for others. Perhaps now Allah Azza wa Jalla is going to bless your business even more. Right? You know I have a principle in life. You know this principle is? Man ahabba an yataqaddam an nas taqaddam. Whoever loves for others to progress, to move forward, then he is going to move forward as well. Sometimes, even in the da'wah sphere, right? It can get very, very toxic. Everyone's scared for his throne. Huh? He's going to take over my mimbar. Right? No, my brothers and my sisters, it shouldn't be like that. Right? We've come across some elders, mashallah, they look at the youngsters and they say, Akhi, take the reins. Right? You guys take the baton, yallah. While others are terrified for their positions. They'll try and put you down. Right? So treating the people in a kind manner. Treating them nicely. You're really, really busy, my brothers and my sisters. You've got an exam coming up. And you feel like that the whole world is crumbling down over your head. Right? Go and help somebody out. See what this does to you. Right? You know Shaykh Al-Islam Taymi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, right? كَانَ يَسْعَى فِي حَوَائِجِ النَّاسِ سَعْيًا شَدِيدًا He would really, really go out his way to help others. Really go out his way. Why? Because he knows if he helps others, Allah Azza wa Jalla will help him. Right? وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِي Allah is in the aid and the assistance of his servant as long as he's helping his brothers. You see an old lady with shopping bags, guys. That's struggling. Help her out. See how you feel almost instantly, brothers and sisters. Right? Just helping the people out. You're thinking to yourself, um, you know, it's going to busy me. No, brothers and sisters, not. See the barakah that you see in your time. Right? Just being there for the people, my brothers and my sisters, can really, really go a long way. Even Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, وَمِنْ أَسْبَابِ شَرْحِ الصَّدْرِ الْإِحْسَانُ إِلَى الْخَلْقِ وَنَفْعُهُمْ بِمَا يُمْكِنُهُ مِنَ الْمَالِ From the ways of really bringing yourself peace, right? And feeling great inside of your heart is being good to the creation. And then look what he says. Benefiting them in that which you are able with when it comes to wealth. You may not necessarily have the physical capability, but you have the wealth to support them. Well, yeah, you may not necessarily have the money, right? You may not necessarily have the, the power that Allah Azza wa Jalla gives certain individuals that have strength, but you have links. He says here, well, yeah. Some people have links, right? They can make things happen, but he doesn't have the strength to maybe help you move something or to push a car. He doesn't have that, right? Or he doesn't have money, but he's got links. Does that make sense? وَالنَّفْعِ بِالْبَدَنْ وَأَنْوَاعُ الْإِحْسَانِ Right? Some have the capability with the body power, right? And then look what he says, فَإِنَّ الْكَرِيمَ الْمُحْسِنَا أَشْرَحُ النَّاسِ صَدْرًا The one who's generous, the one who's a good doer, he is the person, my brothers and my sisters, that is the most content. الله أكبر وَأَطْيَبُهُمْ نَفْسًا وَأَنْعَمُهُمْ قَلْبًا he has the most purest of hearts. He's in a very, very good place spiritually. The one who really, really goes out his way, my brothers and my sisters, to help others. And I have so many statements written down. Maybe we'll publish it one day, my brothers and my sisters. Is anyone here more busy than the Prophet Wasallam? Right? Sometimes we turn around and say, we're busy. I don't have time. Right? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was a general, who was the Mufti, who was the Qadi, he who had nine wives at the same time. A lot of you guys are Masakin, huh? You don't even have one, right? He had nine wives at the same time. He had children, right? He was dealing with Janais, people that were passing away. 
teaching the people. He had all of that. And still, my brothers and my sisters, this hadith, subhanAllah, doesn't fail to, sh to really amaze me all the time. Anas bin Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he tells us about a lady. She had issues in her intellect. فقالت يا رسول الله one time she came to the messenger of Allah and she said إن لي إليك حاجة there is something that you have that I need so he said to her يا أم فلان أو mother of so and so انظري أي السكك شئتي حتى أخذي لك حاجتك don't worry take me wherever right she was a woman who was a mentally 100% right take me wherever you need and I'm ready to be there by your side. So he helped her out up until she finished. ما سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شيئا فقال لا. There was never something that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked that he ever said no. Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he also said in another hadith, أحب الناس إلى الله أنفعهم للناس. The most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are most beneficial to the people. وَأَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ And the most beloved actions to Allah azza wa jal is some happiness that you enter into his heart. أَوْ تَكْشِفُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً He's going through some distress, some hardship. You remove it. You see that your brother has some debt. You help him remove it. أَوْ تَطْرُدُ عَنْهُ جُوعًا He's hungry and you help him remove that. وَلِأَنْ أَمْشِيَ مَعَ أَخِي الْمُسْلِمِ That I go with my brother to help him out and something that he needs is more beloved to me than doing اعتكاف in this masjid and he pointed to his masjid. Right? Number three, my brothers and my sisters. Number three. غَضُّ البصر. Lowering your gaze. It's one of those things that really, really softens up your heart. Ibn Taymiyyah says, narrating this from Mujahid, غض البصر عن محارم الله يورث حب الله. Lowering your gaze from that which is haram brings about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And I know it's not easy, my brothers and my sisters. However, what you need to understand, my brothers and my sisters, us not lowering the gaze may well be the reason why we end up losing our faith. Right? It all starts with an innocent look, then it becomes intriguing. One thing leads to another. What the eyes can't see, the heart won't desire. And before you know it, you find yourself in a very, very dark place. Ibn Jawzi says, وَعْلَمْ No. أَنَّ أَصْلَ الْعِشْقِ إِطْلَاقُ الْبَصَرِ that the root cause for becoming infatuated. Infatuated is a sickness, not my brothers and my sisters. Infatuation, becoming lovesick, where one can no longer control himself. He wakes up and he goes to sleep thinking about that which he looked at. He says, Just as it's fate for a man, it is also fate for a woman. And then look what he says, and this is so touching, right? وَقَدْ ذَهَبَ دِينُ خَلْقٍ كَثِيرٍ مِنْ الْمُتَعَبِّدِينَ بِإِطْلَاقِ الْبَصَرِ The religion of people who were devout worshippers of Allah Azza wa Jal, their deen went, guys. He's not talking about the drug dealer. He's not talking about a sinner. He's talking about someone who is a devout worshipper of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said he lost his religion because he did not know his case. She said, you need to be careful. So Ibn Al-Qayyim, my brothers and my sisters, talks about some of the benefits that bring about when you lower your gaze. Right? He mentions three guys. يُجِبُ الثَّلَاثَ فَوَائِدْ Number one, حَلَاوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ وَلَذَّتُ The sweetness of faith. Right? Sweetness of faith. That peace that an individual will end up feeling. Right? And then he says, فَإِنَّ مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْ Because when you leave something for the sake, Allah will give you that which is better. Number two, نُورُ الْقَلْبِ وَصِحَةُ الْفَرَاسَةِ Allah Azza wa Jal will glow in your heart and He will grant you intuition. You guys know what intuition is? Sometimes you can see danger coming from afar while others will only realize the moment they hit with it. 
You begin to see things that others may not necessarily see, right, initially. And then the third thing, my brothers and my sisters, look what he says. قُوَّةُ الْقَلْبِ وَثَبَاتُهُ وَشَجَاعَتُهُ Allah Azza wa Jal will strengthen your heart. It will make it courageous and firm. وَيَحْرُبُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنْ And the shaytan will run away from that kind of individual. And that is because you put in an effort in lowering your gaze. You can only have the first look, guys. The first look only. And then you have to move your eyes away. You don't move your eyes away, my brothers and my sisters. You've only got yourself to blame when you find yourself in a very dark place. Right? The same goes with sisters. I don't know, sometimes sisters think that they have some sort of green card, right? That they are excused from this. غَضُّ الْبَصَرِ أَصْلُ أَصِيلٍ فِي حِفْظِ الْقَلْبِ Ibn al-Qayyib says, lowering your gaze, it is the foundation to preserving your heart. Right? And this is why, this is why, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about lowering your gaze and also safeguarding the private part, which was mentioned first, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنَ بْصَارِهِ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing man and also the believing woman to lower the and then to safeguard their private part. Because, like I said earlier, what the eyes can't see, the heart won't desire. You looked, now you want to do the next thing. Your lust completely sparks out of control. Zina al aynain al nadar. The zina of the eyes is what? Looking. The zina of the tongue is chirping or flirting. Right? And the zina of the hand is what? The zina of the feet is what? Right? Sometimes an innocent, innocent glance. The moment you click on her profile picture, my brothers, you are playing with fire. You are playing with fire. Right? And sometimes what happens, she slips into your DMs, right? Shaitan is whispering. What do you want to say, guys? Give her da'wah. Huh? <laughs> and she ends up giving him da'wah, guys. Allah has a reality. Waqi ibn al-Jarrah, he said, one time we left with Sufyan al-Thawri on the day of Eid. He said, inna awwala ma nabda'u bihi fi yawmina the first thing we're going to start with today on the day of Eid is when all the girls start coming out dressing to impress, right? Huh? And you got some men that start flaunting their wives, right? You guys know what that means? I has a big problem here in America. Huh? Flaunting your wife. Hey everybody, come look at my wife. He's the one that dresses her up. Slaps the makeup on her face. Hmm? Don't worry, you know. I think you guys call this a simp, right? Uh, someone, is, right? This is a problem, my brothers. The principle is here, when it comes to a woman, is that she should not be drawing attention to herself, and she should be dressing modestly. It's unfortunate that some of our sisters, they dress better outside of the house than inside. Who are you trying to impress? Your husband is most deserving to your good looks and to your makeup and to your hair and, and your fancy clothes and that is glittery and glamorous and whatever have you, right? While she's at home, she might be wearing her pajamas, right? Doesn't put in an effort. And you as well, my friend, you have to put in your effort. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala would dress up to his wife. To dress up. Because he would love that also. From his wife, right? Works both ways. The reason why I'm pointing out the sisters, and please, sisters, don't take it the wrong way, right? It mainly happens on the day of Eid. It is like a party that the sister is going to, dressing to impress. It's like sometimes, subhanAllah, you can see, you know, on the day of Eid, 
In Ramadan, the shayateen are locked up, right? Like on the day of Eid, it's actually been released. With how people behave on Eid. So he's saying, first thing that we start with on the day of Eid is by lowering our gaze. There was even, subhanAllah, this righteous man of the past. Yeah. This righteous man of the past. I forgot his name. Sinan or something like that. He went out for Eid and when he came back, his wife asked him, how many good-looking women did you look at? He said, Wayhak, woe to you. From the moment I left, all the way till I came back, I only looked down to my toes. The Ibham. Many, many years ago, I said this in a video, and I completely mistranslated the Ibham. I said the thumb. Huh? So some people interpreted this as, you know, walking around looking at your thumb. Because <laughs> you have Ibham on your hands and you've got Ibham on your feet as well. Right? So you look down. Right? How many are we on? 30? Number four, guys. Mujalasatu salihin, sitting with the righteous. Sitting with the righteous. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, when you sit with the righteous, six things will change for you. That's five, six. Huh? Six. Six things will change for you. Number one, you're somebody who has doubts by sitting with the righteous. And when we say righteous, we're not just referring to someone who has righteous deeds. What makes you more righteous is the knowledge that you come with, right? You're someone who's suffering from doubts. These doubts change into what? Yaqeen, certainty. Agreed? Number two, وَمِنَ الْرِيَاءِ إِلَى you're someone who likes to show off, but you sit with the righteous. They encourage you and remind you of being sincere. Number three, وَمِنَ الْغَفْلَةِ إِلَى Being someone who's heedless to being someone who's what? Someone who's what? Someone who's remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or conscious of Allah jalla fi ula. Number four, being someone who's chasing after the dunya to being more conscious of the hereafter. Number five, being someone who has arrogance to being someone who's humble. Number six, being someone who has bad intentions to being someone who wants to do good. Right? Who wants to advise people sincerely. I must point out, my brothers and my sisters, that when you go into these universities, especially, we run into a lot of people. Right? We run into a lot of people. Right? You're right there? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, type. We run into a lot of people, brothers and sisters. Today, someone may look extremely righteous, however, He's polluted or she's polluted. Okay? A sister is dressing modestly from top to bottom. But then Mala Yahsul. Because of her mind being polluted with this feminist ideology, you run into her thinking that she's righteous and that she's a good person who holds your best interest. Only for you to all of a sudden find yourself flirting with kufr. Wallahi azim. I'm sure some of you brothers have seen a video with one of the very well-known famous speakers, corner debaters, right? Who was standing with this 17-year-old or 18-year-old hijabi. Did you guys see it? If you didn't, don't, don't go on it. Uh. He's debating this young girl who's wearing hijab, dressed. Right? And wallahi al azim my brothers, man, some of the statements that are coming out of her mouth is borderline Islam. 
She's been made to feel or she's been convinced that the way we should look at everything is with the lens of equal rights. Sorry guys, every lecture somehow the feminism comes out. Huh? I'm getting ready for Minnesota. Huh? Huh? Equal rights. Did Islam come to establish equal rights or came to establish justice? This is why we don't tell our women to go and work in the sewages. Would anyone here in their right mind instruct his wife or his daughter or his sister to go and work in the sewages? But equal rights though, right? Huh? Just as a man would work there, let a woman go work there as well. Or under the scorching heat, building these skyscrapers. Or some of these hard labor jobs, equal rights. We treat our women with dignity and honor. Right? Even if she's a multi-billionaire, you as a husband still have to put clothes on her. Did you know that? That's why I tell you my sisters, a big red flag is, a big red flag. The moment this brother at the marriage meeting expects you to start paying for half the bills. That's a big red flag, guys. Right? But now, are we still running around with equal rights? He has to pay for the bills. If you want to help her, excellent. Great. But is it imposed, imposed upon her? Is it conditional? No, it's not. Right? I think that's very, very important that we realize. You have a lot more rights, my sister, than you think. But sometimes the issue is because how men have conducted themselves, women, women, they start going down that lane of feminism. Does that make sense? They start going down that lane of feminism. So we need to be aware of that as well. There's different causes for it. Sometimes the man's, you know, sometimes these universities. Uh, you guys got a problem with what I said? Huh? About looking after the woman, paying for the bills. Sakum lahir. When we talk about Mujalasa to Salihin, my brothers and my sisters, we have to expand on it and make that a little bit more relevant to today's, today's day and age. When the scholars of the past spoke about being with the righteous, they were referring to hanging around with them, going to them directly. However, in today's day and age, the dynamics have changed. Agreed? This is why you have something called Facebook friends. You don't just have friends that you meet in person anymore. You have virtual friends. Once upon a time, my brothers and my sisters, a parent would say, Alhamdulillah, my children are at home. She is not hanging around with all of these girls that are what? Going to the clubs. My child's not hanging around with drug dealers. Alhamdulillah. They're at home. Today, a child or a young man, I'm not even going to say young man anymore. Any person might be just on his phone in between those four walls, right? Four walls. And he's exposed to so much more filth than you would if you went outside. Agreed? The whole world has become like a small little village. The world wide web is just a fingertip away. Sahih? That's what www stands for, by the way, for those who didn't know. The world wide web is a fingertip away. Where you become exposed to all types of filth. All right. Let me ask you guys a question. Going on to... Washington Post on your phone is that haram reading the news is haram doing that which is permissible is that haram huh don't even think it makes sense right doing that which is permissible is haram huh you know a statement of Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi that you know it makes a lot of sense to a lot of things that happen he says he says when the heart when the heart begins to drown in that which is permissible. Mubah. 
We're not talking about that which is recommended or that which is wajib. We're just talking about things that okay, it's permissible. When you overexhaust that, right, your heart begins to darken. Guys, pay attention. This is very, very important. When the heart now begins to drown in that which is permissible, it becomes dark. And then he says, If that happens now with the permissible things, then how about the one who actually engages in haram? I'll give you guys another example that you can relate to. Because we had the Lakers playing with the Nets yesterday, right? Around the corner from here. It's playing basketball haram. Did you guys show? Huh? Guys, you guys will know it's so ajib. One of the Mashayikh got sent a message. People are warning against Abu Taymiyyah. Right? When I was on my way to deliver a program in New Jersey, right? Why are they warning against him? Because apparently I said sports are haram. I told the Sheikh, Sheikh, I'm a baller myself. Right? <laughs> so playing sports is not haram, guys. Some of you guys said it very, very hesitantly. It's fine. But when it now becomes excessive, when it becomes excessive, Ibn al Jawzi is saying, doing that which is permissible excessively is going to cause your heart to become dark. Spending hours and hours and hours just playing. And, and he says, Fakayf bil haram. Now we come onto the phones. I give all these examples. So, what? begins to make sense constantly being on our phones generally speaking using your phone is fine constantly being on your phone my brothers and my sisters believe it or not it's having a big effect on our hearts it really really is right today when you walk in right you see someone is on his phone you have to give salam to two people him and also his phone right in order to get his attention you have to take it away from him we're suffering inside, guys. We're suffering. And you know how we are making up for it? How, what we're doing to make ourselves feel better? By just staying on our phones distracted. Just scrolling through it. Wallahi take that, take that phone away from you, it becomes like a nitty. Right? Somebody who's like an addict. And that is because our hearts have become tainted. How long do you have shake? <laughs> we got five minutes, right? How many have we done, guys? Huh? Five. Number five, guys. Qira'atul Qur'ani wa tadabburuhu To recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to reflect on it. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi says, فَلَمْ يُنْزِلِ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ شِفَاءً قَطْ أَعَمَّ وَلَا أَنْفَعَ وَلَا أَعْظَمَ وَلَا أَشْجَعَ فِي إِزَالَةِ الدَّاءِ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Allah Azza wa Jalla has not sent down anything from the heavens that is a better cure, right? Something that is more beneficial and more greater that removes the sicknesses than the Qur'an. I'm going to share something very private to you guys. I don't think I've ever said this publicly. When I was in Medina, right, I would generally speaking spend a lot of time in the haram. My timetable would be Asr time, I'm there, all the way till maybe around 9.30 and then I would come back. That would be my daily schedule. When it came to my university studies, I would just be the type who just revises for it in the exam period, so don't try that at home, right? The university studies, you had the university studies, you had the haram studies. I had different things that I was prioritizing. I would give it importance, but the exams, I would kind of like give it a lot more later on. So when the exam period comes by, right, I would give it my everything and all to revising for the exam because I needed to get good marks if you want to stay longer in Medina you need to have high grades and then you need to you know pass the master's exam and then you get accepted 
So exam period, I stopped going to the haram. And normally every day when I go, I would read my Quran to the teacher. Exam period, I would just spend my days and my nights inside of my room on university campus. Well, like brothers and sisters, within the space of a week and a half, or maybe it was two weeks, I began to feel so empty. Wallahi. I'm like, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? I was like, you know, you know what? I'm going to go to the haram today. Something made me go to the haram, even though it's exam period. I shouldn't be leaving my room. I need to make up for lost time. Right? I go to my teacher. I was like, Sheikh, I don't feel right. I feel, subhanAllah, this type of emptiness. You know, the first thing he said to me, and it was the only thing that came out of his mouth. When is the last time you read Quran? When you have a habit of doing something that is praiseworthy, right? Like the Quran, which I used to do on a regular basis, reading to my teachers. And then all of a sudden you stop, right? You're going to feel what? A difference. He goes, when's the last time you read Quran? I felt so bad that day when he said that to me. So between Maghrib and Isha, I put my phone away, right? And I just read Quran, guys. Nothing else. I just started reading. I wasn't even memorizing. I was just like reading. reading. Wallahi, almost instantly I could feel the difference. Right? Almost instantly. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Right? We're going to have to stop now, inshallah ta'ala.